Hey guys, in all our previous videos up to this moment, we have been looking at designing a form, submitting the data, and being able to view it after submission. The next major step to take after doing all of this wonderful work is to actually store this data that tomorrow we can view it the day after and essentially we are creating a registration system for an IT conference so at the end of the day we need to see a full list of everybody who has filled out this form. The next major requirement for this to be accomplished is a database. Our objective for this video is to start our database creation process and we will be using phpMyAdmin to design a database in MariaDB slash MySQL. Now to get started we first need to launch phpMyAdmin and to do that we just open a new tab in our browser and then we can browse to our local host address but the application that we're going to or the folder is phpMyAdmin. All right, so that's the letter, the letters P H P M Y A D M I N. All right. So if you type that in and it doesn't work, then you probably want to make sure that your MySQL service is running. So you can just open Zamp and make sure that MySQL is up and running, and it should work. All right. Now some things to note: I will say MySQL a lot. Uh, because for the years that has been the default database engine that comes packaged in ZAMP or WAMP or any of those uh, server PHP environment applications. More recently, there has been another version of MySQL called MariaDB and so you see them being used very interchangeably quite often. Now, if you have successfully browsed to PHP my admin then your screen would look something like this if it does prompt you for a login then you can use root with no password that usually works and if you still have difficulty you can let me know and I will assist you now PHP my admin is a database management system designed well really for MySQL slash MariaDB it's completely web based and it would have been installed when you installed ZAMP so this is a web based portal that allows you to manipulate a database as you need to without any additional overhead of opening another application and using up too many resources so it's really handy and quite clean it's easy to use and so we will be using this to design our database that will be accepting data from this form now based on the nature of this form i have scoped two tables in my design and it's okay if you create one table. We could create one table to store everything. So we just know that we're filling one table with all the information. And I'll explain why I have two tables when I am designing the tables. So the tables that we're going to have will be one, attendee, and two, area of expertise. All right. And I'll explain why I'm making a table just for area of expertise. So we can go back to PHP my admin and then to create a new database we click on this new this new button over here that link and then that will bring up a dialog box or change the page rather and ask us for the name of the database. So we'll just call this one attendance. So I always name my databases um, clearly enough that I know exactly what application it is relating to. So I can say attendance underscore db. All right, and then we're going to go ahead and click create and then it's going to then move on to allowing us to start creating tables so the first table I'm going to create is attendee and the number of columns I want because I can do all of that granted I can change that along the way but I can just count and say I want one two three four five six columns so I can just increase this number to six and then click go and then the next screen is asking me to actually fill out what I want. So, well, I actually should have gotten an extra column and I'll say why. So the first column that I usually put in my, any database I'm designing is an auto incrementing primary key. So the first one would be an ID. I'm going to call it attendee underscore ID. And I'll leave the data type as int. And I'm going to, one, 
say that it should be ai auto increment means it's going to count by itself so that means for every record that goes in this column the value in this column will always change and so that will always be unique and so this will be my primary key since every database properly designed database should be uh, should comprise records that are uniquely identifiable and having a primary key that is unique is step number one so the easiest way to make sure that you'll always have a unique id because based on the data we're collecting there is nothing unique the only maybe the email address has to be unique each time and really and truly it doesn't because i'm not going to stop somebody from using the same email address twice so there's nothing here that really says oh this person is definitely unique so i'm going to create my own unique value call it attendee id make it auto incrementing and i'm also going to and then that prompts the addition of an index where they're asking if i want to make it a primary index i'll just click go and what that did was to create the an index called primary so that's how we get the primary key all right and auto increment so just by enabling auto increment it's just going to say oh is this supposed to be the primary key and by enabling that then we know we have the primary key that is auto incrementing so then i'll go ahead and create a column that corresponds with each data point that i intend to store so our first name last name date of birth and so i'm just going to fill those out in php my admin so our first name and then the data type for first name can't be int it has it has to be something that would be like a string so with databases they're not as forgiving as php with php the data type didn't matter for the variable i could put text number everything inside of any type of variable but in the database we have to be very very specific as to what kind of data will be stored inside that column so the most popular ones that you'll see will use are at the top and we have varchar which is one used for text a lot and then we also have text all right so you you can use either one i'm going to stick to varchar because varchar has been around for a while and that's what everybody has always been using and that's the more popular one you'll always see in other database engines so i'll just use varchar and i'll set this length to 50 so by setting varchar which is a text and the 50 i'm saying that i am allowing this column to store any block of text up to 50 characters big all right and then i can set defaults and all sorts of things but i really don't need to set anything else because i don't need a default value it should be getting it from the form and the other the other options don't really apply so i'm not going to put those in so i'll just move on to the next one which is last name and last name i'm sure you'll agree get can get the same treatment as first name and i also made that 50. you can increase this if you wish maybe 100 because sometimes you do have people coming with some very unique and long names so what will happen is that if somebody fills out your form and their name is more than the the the, the number you set here it will truncate it so it will only store as many characters as it can so setting a bigger number is always a good idea in case you're anticipating that a base value is not practical all right so our first name last name next is date of birth all right so note that this does not necessarily have to line up with the label or the name or the id that you give the control because mapping will be done in another way but you always want to make sure that you you have defined some space to store some value and date of birth would not be a number it's more of a date so i'll use the date data type because i'll be storing a date inside of that column i don't need to set a length for the value so you notice that sometimes you set a length sometimes you don't int doesn't need a length date doesn't need a length the other two columns would be email address and contact number all right and both of these would be varchar and i'll set email address to 100 and contact number i'm going to set as varchar also not int because people may come and they use their dashes and their brackets when they're typing in their numbers because some people type their numbers like 
that and then space right so you, you may end up with variations unless you're going to be very strict with your mask and even then you don't want to use a number I my personal rule of thumb is don't use a number data type if you don't intend to do math on the column so we're not going to be doing any mathematics with the person's contact number so I'll leave that as varchar and the typical number is up to 11 or 13 characters long so I'll set this to 15 so that anybody from any region whether you use 11 digits or 13 digits or, or one extra one there's enough space for you all right and we left out a column which would be the area of expertise so i'm just going to add a new column so we ran out of columns because i asked for six but i used one of the six to do something else so at the top here i can just say add one column so i'll just click go and then that just gives me another column so i'm going to say special t all right and i'm going to leave that as int and you'll see why so i'm going to say specialty id all right and then i can choose to preview the sql because really and truly this is just going to execute some sql in the background and if you are not sure about sql or the language itself you can check out my other tutorials on my sql development data database development and mastery and you can also check out my other set of videos on microsoft sql server for everyone so Without previewing my the, the SQL that would be used to execute this, I can just click save, which will actually invoke the SQL in the background and give us our table. And then this is our table design and structure. So we look and we see all of our, uh, our columns as they were defined. So you see this little key indicates that this is the primary key. All right. And then they tell you that it's auto incrementing. So that means for every value that goes in and uh value will be generated uniquely in this column now i did say that we would have two tables and i would explain why so you notice that i use specialty id instead of specialty as a varchar even though we're asking for well we're showing words over here but we're not going to be storing words and the reason for that is I don't want to store words. It, it, to me, it is useless to have database admin 20 times in my database. Instead of doing that, I'm just going to create another table for just the specialties. And I'm going to reference the, that table whenever somebody selects something from this drop down. So in other words, if I add a new specialty to this list, then this drop down list should automatically pull that from that table. I shouldn't have to go into my into my html every time and if you remember the manual process of adding the options and then i would have to go and add another option and then it, that that can be tedious so what i'm going to do is create a table that will have the sole purpose of storing the list of specialties because we only have four and we know it is a broader um career than just four specialties so we this will give us greater flexibility in managing our lists and wherever we have a drop down list it's good if that drop down list reads its data from a table so i'm going to go to new create the table called specialties all right and i need a specialty underscore id so i always start off with my id column and i'm going to make it auto incrementing which will prompt me to make it a primary key and i just click go and int and everything else is good and then i'm just going to have another column that says name so this this would be the id and this would be the name and name would be the name of the specialty so the text value that is associated with this id will go in this column all right and then i'll just make that one a varchar and i can do this one at 50 and then i'll save and so i have two tables so i have specialty specialties and i have attendees so now that we have this new table on the block and we need to establish that specialty id from the specialties table is somewhat related to and i'm just going to click on the table here attendee and then it goes to browse but i'll click on structure and 
we want to establish that these two are related and literally the word related applies because in databases you have what you call relationships so we need to establish that there is a relationship between the specialty id in our attendee table and the specialty id in our specialties table all right so i'm going to go back to my attendee table click on the structure and then i'm going to click relation view so we have table structure and we have relation view and then this will now ask us to set up what we call foreign key constraints now in a nutshell a primary key is a unique value in in one table meaning attendee id is the primary key in the attendee table however we need to reference the primary key of the specialty table inside the attendee table and that's what makes it a foreign key so it's a primary key in the specialties table but over here in the attendee table is going to be a foreign key another thing with this constraint is that if i have four specialties in the specialties table i can't reference a value in the attendee table that doesn't exist on that side so it's another level of protection to make sure that your data is going to be clean and it's going to be solid so i'm just going to add this constraint name and i'm going to give it a name that tells me what it is for so fk short for foreign key and it's a foreign key between attendee and uh specialties all right so that's my naming convention you could name this puppies if you wanted to but if you named it puppies and took a sabbatical and came back and looked at your code it wouldn't make much sense so the point is you want to give this a name that is actually symbolic of what it is for so mine is saying that this is a foreign key constraint between the attendee table and the specialties table and i can leave the restrict if you change this to cascade it means that if you delete the primary key value from the primary table then it would delete every related value so i'm going to leave these for now and i'm going to add the column from the attendee table which is specialty id and then i'm going to select the database that this is related to so we're still in the attendance db and then the table inside of attendance db is specialties and then the column is specialty ID. So it's always going to default to the, whatever the primary key is of the next table that you say there's a relationship with because it knows that clearly you're trying to relate it to the primary key. So if you don't see it appear like this, that means you didn't set up your primary key properly. Now, once again, if you want more in-depth understanding of databases, relationships, SQL, all of those wonderful technologies, you can check out my other videos, my SQL database development and mastery, or Microsoft SQL Server for everyone. Now, having done all of these things, we can go ahead and click save. And then this would actually have executed this query and set up that constraint between the two tables. If you need to quickly modify your table and make something the primary key because you may have missed it or you didn't quite understand it the first time, you can always tick the column and click primary. All right, And then if you want to make it auto increment, you can go ahead and click change and that will kind of bring you back to the design view where you could go ahead and write all of what you may have missed the first time. That is it for our database design for this small application. You will always have access to PHP My Admin, and for every application that you build and you might need a database for, you can always go to localhost slash PHP My Admin. Go ahead and create your new database and all of the tables that you require. If you need further information or have any difficulties following the steps in this video, feel free to drop me a line and I'll be sure to follow up with you.